Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Saturday webinar with Karen Newman today. She will be channeling for us. So <clears throat> um, I want to say welcome to everyone that's here. Alex, Angie, Art, Christine, David, Iwa, Karen, of course, P, <laughs> Thea, and of course me. So welcome back, Karen. Thank you. <laughs> oh, did you see me? I, did, I thought I put my mirror on. I mean, my uh, thing on, but anyway. No. <clears throat> so uh, Karen uh, was singing for us before we started. So thank you for that. Oh. And um, we talked a little bit about the root chakra. I don't know if you would like to say anything about that life. Um, well, we were talking about, uh, and everyone had great contributions. We were talking about that it, it, it struck me as funny yesterday. I was thinking about how everyone is trying to find out who they are, and we don't know who we are, which is odd considering we are who we are. And, and it, I think some of it's accepting who we are. And, and what is your name? And I, he, he brought it up. Oh, oh, I can't say your name. Oh, my goodness. You, you can call me Andy. Asia. What is your name? You can call me Andy. That's my reptilian Andy? name. Andy? Yeah. Okay. Well, Andy the reptilian, he said to, he, he, he made a point that sometimes we don't even embrace our culture or embrace our, you know, lineage and, and we don't acknowledge that. And, and, and sometimes we think who we are is not who we are. We think that it's somewhere so so far away from us, but we have to really look at ourselves and, and know who we are. So that was just the gist of it. So, what do you think makes us who we are? Oh, I think I think Andy's right. I think it's it's we chose to come into this world. We chose to come into this uh, place with with the parents, our culture, our our lineage, and. That's, you know, we are the divine, we're a spark of the divine, but we're also those things that we chose to be. It's no mistake, even if things are not so easy, it's really no mistake that we are that person. We're in this body, we're in this family, we're in this country, we're in this place. So that's, that's who we are. I mean, but we're also divine. So it's finding that balance between our divinity and our higher knowing, as well as being at peace with, with ourselves. Okay, so if, if somebody's having an identity crisis, right? Yeah. Where would you tell them? Okay, why don't you start here? Why don't Why don't you, why don't you start asking you like these particular things to start figuring out who you are? That's that's different for every single person. So much of your identity has to do with. When people are happy, they tend to know who they are. I would say, look at yourself when you're happy and how do you feel? Where are you grounded then? And when you're unhappy, why are you unhappy? What is it that you're missing? We talked about that a lot of it has to do with the integration of your chakras and being in balance. So seek your balance, whatever that means for you. Make peace around you. Make peace with your family. Make peace for, with, your, with your society. Even if you don't agree, agreeing and doesn't mean that you can't be at peace with something that you can't acknowledge it for what it is and, and maybe see your place as part of it. Some things you can control and some things that you really can't, but you can always direct how you feel and your feelings about a certain situation. Sometimes it, you know, you can be dissatisfied and motivated to change things and still be happy within yourself and fulfilled. So. There's no one single answer because for every single person, it's different. Some people don't have an identity crisis until they're much older. Some people have one from the moment they, you know, start walking around. So, and you can have, you can have them at different times because sometimes we forget who we are. Sometimes we get off of our, you know, our path, but that's part of growth as well. I guess don't be too hard on yourself would really be the answer, but try to accept yourself and accept everything around you. As being okay. part so, of everything. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that when you live in a culture that suppresses you or 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 forces a lot of um, things upon you that you don't agree with? 
um, or particularly women where, you know, they are put down or they are sort of less than. So how do you learn happy with yourself while being forced to follow certain rules that you don't agree with? I will. Be, I'm lucky that I'm not in that society. So whatever answer I will say will maybe seem very trite and, and too easy. But that's for each individual to find out, you know, to, to do that. Sorry, I've got a cat. Came, and there's no one answer, Sabrina. You know, there's really no one answer. I can't answer that 100%. I would just say you do your best and you find your, you find your faith and you find your, you know, your belief in something greater than yourself and you you do your best the other the thing that comes to mind is everything isn't always about us in the totality some things are much bigger than us and if you want to stand up for some kind of change it will have an impact it may or may not have an impact straight away but it will have an impact but sometimes you know loving the people around you protecting your children and and or you know and taking care of other people to assure them of so that they can remember that you're that they're that they're okay is important you know there's no magic button where you push a button and all of a sudden the world is fair and everybody is treated equally it doesn't happen that way um part of it yeah. is our process of evolution and we may or may not get there in our lifetime or ever see the results of of what we of, of what we sow but it doesn't mean you don't try so for people who are oppressed and suppressed i would just say have heart and 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 try to take some kind of action something but everybody has the degrees different degrees of what makes them happy you know you can look at a country and say oh that woman's suppressed but she or may may not feel suppressed Right, and that's what I was going to. Um, so don't. If, so if they, again, you can't. You can't say, "Oh, that woman's suppressed," and "Oh, she has a terrible life," because what she what she views as a great life may be completely different what, than what you view as a total life. So I would say, focus on yourself. Try to do the best for yourself, and mm -hmm. don't uh, don't so much worry too much about everybody else. Love everybody else. Help where you can if if you feel drawn to but I wouldn't project your, what you think will make you happy on everybody else. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. I mean, obviously there, there is a little bit of everything in every Because culture. in American society and in European and society, think, women are not treated equally. Yeah. You know, um, that's the but I think, equal in every, no, country. not everybody's no. equal. I mean, there's a guy walking but, down the street with dark skin who's not treated equally by the police. But he has generally, in the rest of the time, a great life. I mean, it's all in degrees. So I don't think there's one easy, easy answer. No, no. And uh, let me finish my thought here. Um, I think part of the issue also becomes what you said. When we think, um, let's say when you see, like in, in the jungles in South America, that you see the natives there and you feel oh we got to change them and they got to have this and they got to have education and they got to have all these things that we are used to and we're trying to impose what we think should be onto them when if they are happy the way they are and and they have chosen to preserve that and keep to themselves why do we think that our way is better? It's just different. Arrogance, ego. You know, sometimes maybe things would be better for them. Maybe it would be good to give them running water and help them in those ways, you know? But there's, there's, a, there's a difference between offering uh, of technologies and imposing, you know, right. life rules. So right, because I think you need to ask, what do you think you need? Yeah, um, is, as opposed to saying you, you have to have this. Well, so but so um, I think the presupp, like I was saying, the presupposition that that person's unhappy or suppressed or whatever may or may not be true. It, it really right. has to do with the person, you know. They they right. say the caged butterfly still sings. So 
the cage of birds still sings, right? So you can always find your own happiness. And we also have to acknowledge that everything is for the experience of the divine. So every, every experience is valid. And it might be that soul's choice to come into that situation where they're um, experiencing that. And that might be what they want to experience in that situation. So the best thing anybody can do is take care of themselves, look after themselves, and not tell the rest of the world how to live. <laughs> because you're going to have a big job ahead of you, and you're never going to be done. And you, you probably need to take care of yourself better and work on yourself and not everybody else. Yep. So on that note... On that note, so we channel. <laughs> yes, let's. Okay, let's let me take my glasses off. I'm just gonna yeah. ohm, um, and I'll. They'll answer is any questions you have. I would say on the um, alien uh, stuff, they're not so much interested in that. They're more interested in life, truth, and uh, and uh, and you know, if you have anything that you're working on on a soul level. Um, they'll be interested to talk to you about that, but stuff about um, our ET friends, that's really not for them. It's just to preface it. And I also will say they really um, prefer questions and not questions like, do you have a message for me? That's, that's not a question. So think about what you want to know. And uh, we will, we. I wonder ask. if you want uh, me to bring in someone that might actually uh, want to ask questions like me as a father i don't but i do have several of my kids that do want to talk just to see what happens when we get there so if you have questions if you have questions for them or you got questions from your children and they have questions then, then let me know can i ask who are you channeling theos i channel theos that is a aspect of my higher self and they are um yeah, existing on a higher realm they're a collective and they really focus on uh, oneness and, and unconditional love and reconciling the soul and and moving into your your sort of the greatest most mm -hmm. uh, connected part of you do you know which dimension are they they're on they've told me they well they they, they move around but they have told me that they are on because the dimensions fold, you know, as you get a, a higher dimensions, they fold and twist upon each other and dimensions exist for a moment and then they don't exist. So they've said to me that they are on the 17th, 18th and 19th dimensions. And sometimes those dimensions twist and they're in another dimension that's a temporary one, but they just sort of focus in that way. They don't have physical, they have form, but they are not physical. So they just move their focus wherever it's interesting for them in the time and whatever they want to experience. Okay, thank you. Sure. But okay. you, you can ask them questions about them because then I also learn when you ask them questions about them. So basically what I'll do is I'll just ohm and then um, they'll let you know they're here and then they will be happy to answer. Any questions yes. that you might have? Before before you start, it's anyone on their phone right now? Um, okay, so everyone is on their computer. So if you want to ask a question, please um, type your name on the side and then um, we will make a list. Thank you everyone. And okay. thank you Karen for doing this for oh, us. I'm excited, so okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit cold. That's why I keep putting this on. And then at some point I might get hot and I might rip it off. So we'll see how it goes. Okay. And if you want to ohm, if you want to mute your mic and, and ohm with me, that's all great. Just to raise the vibration. Um, that's the best thing to do. So namaste, everybody. And uh, yeah, see you on the other side. Namaste. Okay. Namaste. Namaste. Oh. 
We are here and we are Theos. And we are very pleased to be here with you again in your webinar. And we're here to answer any questions that you may have and hopefully shine a light on any confusion or answers that you may need. And we have animals walking around us we can see in the screen. So they're also interested in the energy that we bring. If you can well, hear us, Karen is wondering, then we yes. will continue. So welcome, Theus. Thank you. Um, so I will, I will start with a general question and the line of we, the conversation we were having before. So right now, uh, many people are, are struggling within themselves. Um, with situations of feeling lost and feeling uncomfortable. So I was wondering if you could um, speak to that and if you had any suggestions. Are you lost? Me, no. Okay. I'm good. When you feel lost, it is because you've lost your compass. You have no direct answer to a question of where am I to go? What am I to do? So that is the feeling of being lost. But in fact, you are only where you are. So you only have to look and see yourself. You are not in fact lost. You have lost direction. Sometimes the answer about where you are supposed to go or what you're supposed to do is not directly answered. And that leads to confusion but that is your exercise in trust and being willing to stay in the moment and being willing to experience all that is happening around you. And sometimes when we're lost, it's because we don't like the situation. And so we try to push it past us and we think, when is this going to change? And so many of the times, it's because we're waiting for something to happen to us. And the biggest answer that we can give you is that you have to make decisions and you have to take control and you have to set the direction that you would have. It's not so much that the direction is just given to you. It's for you to choose in every moment what you were supposed to do. And it's not supposed to be in that it comes from on high. It comes from within you. It's for you to decide. So the lesson is when you're feeling lost, choose to take control of your life. So many times people ask the question, and this is one of the things that we do not like to give an answer to. What are the messages for me? We want to know where you're going and what do you want to know about it? We are never going to tell you what to do. We are never going to tell you where you should be. It's for you to decide. And the moment that you decide, you will not be lost anymore because you will be directing yourself. And that is what is important. We wait too long. We wait too much to, for something to come to us. But we are in control. We make the choice. You make the choice. You have to make the choice. If you sit and you are lost for very long, it's because you're not making any choices. So make the choice. Decide where you want to go. 
decide what you want to be. Point yourself in that direction. And it may not come exactly the way you think, but get on the path, make your journey, and don't wait for something to come for you or some message from on high. This is the message from on high. Don't wait, choose, act. So that's our answer. Much different answer, I think, than you thought. Thank you. You're welcome. It's a lesson for everyone. So much of the time, people are waiting. I'm waiting for a sign. I'm waiting. The sign is that you're lost. If you are lost, if you were lost in the woods, do you stand there forever? If you're lost in the desert, do you stand there forever? No, you do not. You start moving. Well, start moving. And even if you find you're moving in the wrong direction, at least you're moving. You can always turn around, but take action. When you are lost because you have no direction, first, the first thing you should see is opportunity. That opportunity is at that moment to choose anything. Karen said several weeks ago that she was empty. She was completely empty. Well, when you're empty, it means you're about to be filled, but the filling comes from choosing what you want and going for it and not sitting around waiting. We wait too long and get nowhere. You don't get anywhere if you don't go anywhere. It's very simple, but very true. The world is spinning, but we are standing completely still. So start moving and then you'll start moving. You won't be lost. But the answer about being lost, and this, this is what we want to communicate, is that it's your choice to where you would go. If you don't know who you are, decide who you want to be. Because it's up to you. You can be whomever you want to be. We say be yourself. But yourself has no doubt about who they are. Doing and being are simultaneously proactive and perpetuating. So be yourself. And if you're truly yourself, then you will not be lost. That's our answer. The extended answer that we finished answering, but we're answering again. So. Dios. Yes. This is Christine. Um, <laughs> I'm having problems with um, with uh, sensing my chakras, except for the birds. Um, is just um, going to the internet on YouTube and then going through the ritual that they have of music and the meditating and so on and so forth of clearing um, chakras. Is that enough? Even though I can't personally, or I don't believe I could feel that I'm cleaning them or we would like you to continue to do what you're doing uh -huh. but we would also like you to make associations with chakra activity we want you to understand that when you have a thought of survival which would be wanting something uh, to be safe or or a sexual feeling or a feeling of fear or a problem talking or actually talking or a spiritual moment that you know to which chakra that corresponds that you will so you will start to, to associate what you do know what you do feel to the chakra that it corresponds with some people may have sensations of spinning orbs within their body and some people may be able to know what chakra it represents so if you're feeling communicative you are feeling your chakra, your throat chakra, which is what color? Do you know? It's blue. So if you start to communicate, think to my, yourself, this is blue, and start to associate with that. And then picture the chakra. And if you're communicating in a good way, your chakra will be spinning in a positive direction. And if you're feeling the need that you can't communicate or you don't communicate, you'll know that your chakra is a little bit closed and 
maybe a little bit smaller than it should be. So when you should be communicating you and you want to open your chakra, send light and picture it opening and spinning in the right direction and getting bigger. And then speak, take action. Do you know what we mean? So be interactive in a way that's associative, that you can understand, and then you'll start to realize that actions and feelings are chakra related. So you may or may not feel the chakra, but you can associate anything that you do with the chakra. And then in fact, you will feel it. There's difference between feeling and knowing, but there's no difference in, in association. We didn't say that correctly. What we want to say is that you will develop a way to feel that may not be actually feeling the chakra. Thank you. You're welcome. Does that make sense to you? It does. Okay. We would say to you, look up what every chakra means. There's so many chakras, but stay with the main ones now. Yeah, yeah. And, and associate what they are and, and what they correspond to. Okay. Yes, you can also know that every chakra corresponds to a time of the week, what chakra is stronger in the week, what day of the week. So you can honor that chakra. If you want to really focus on it, wear the color that's associated with it and start to, to make associated with uh, associations with the different aspects of it. And then you'll start to okay. recognize it. It's more important for, that you understand what the chakra is for. Yes. And if you're in harmony with it or out of harmony with it, then... Uh -huh to feel them because okay. you'll feel them in a different way and then in fact you'll feel them yeah. <laughs> okay great thank you you're welcome are there any more questions yes i have a question Who is that? um there are a lot of beings like myself which come here from vibrational energies which are just much easier than uh, the three-dimensional ones and um, to be specific um, here I am in the physical body and um, I'm quite wise but at the same time the practicality and being close to the ground in this dimension is very hard for me so I can't say that I did find myself functioning well here. Um, do you have any advice for people like me who, <laughs> who again function much better <laughs> in higher chakras if we are talking about chakras but the lower chakras are not exactly uh, where I would like to be. Do you value higher chakras over lower chakras? Would you give up your legs to keep your arms or? No, no, no. But do you realize well, that that's the same thing? It's about being a whole person. And you might find it easier in one way, but it's the same as an athlete would do. You would have to practice. And your lesson and the reason you came here then, because you find it difficult, is to do specifically that, to function. There's no mistake that you're here, and, and we, we want to emphasize that. You didn't land here against your will. You chose this. You chose this experience for the experience of your soul so that you could be a completed soul. So there's no mistake that you're here. There's nothing wrong with you. It's wrong thinking but it's not wrong with you. Okay, maybe I didn't um, form the question um, cl clearly. It's not that I am seeing functioning of one part of me as um, more valuable than the other. Um, it's, it's I am more asking um, what to do to make my functioning in this dimension easier. In what way do you not function well in this dimension? Um, let's talk about concept of money. Mm. You know, 
It's not exactly an easy concept and it doesn't feel even natural. Okay. No. So what is it that you don't understand about money? I don't know if I don't understand. It feels like it's almost like not natural. Well, money is a representation of energy and it's an exchange of energy. It's a manifestation of energy and an exchange of energy. The way that we would say to you to embrace things that are feel unnatural is to realize that in this world, if this world is a game, in fact, and maybe it's easy to think about it, that this is the rules of that game. But you need to learn to be an expert in this game. You need to learn to play this game. And whether you believe that it's natural or not, it is the way it is in the moment. Some people are moving away from money, but not in any way that's so significant that you don't need money. At this moment, money is necessary, because, but it's an exchange of energy. You're giving some of that energy so you can get food. You're giving some of that energy so you can have the lights on in your house. So that is the way it works here. You may not agree with the concept of money. You would like to exchange energy in a different way, but that's the way it is done here. So we would just say to you, take a little bit of a playful stance and be excited about it. And, 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 and look at it from the observer standpoint of, oh, they use money to represent energy. Whereas before we could just give something else or maybe it was just free, but realize that's the rule of the world. It's, it's again, thinking that there's something wrong. If you think it's not natural, then it's natural for this world and you're in this world. So embrace being here, mm -hmm. try to be good at being human because you're human. Okay, I like your um, what you said about turning into a game something playful. Yeah, take a take a take a step back from it and become the observer of it, and sort of play with it. Say, oh, okay, I'm just going to do this because this is what they do here. It's nice that you have perhaps the memory of doing it a different way in another place, but this is the way they do it here. So take a step back from it and and look at it from a playful stance of, oh, I get to I get to play with money. Isn't this fun? Isn't it interesting that they do it this way? And just accept that that's the way it is because it is the way it is here. And maybe you can be part of moving the world forward into getting beyond the money and starting to understand what the energy exchange really should be. But at this moment, just look at everything from a playful standpoint. If we look at things as if we were dropped here and the rule book is life itself you're not actually handed a book but we know that we look at society and money is part of that then look at it how are you going to play with that money a little bit it might be a strange concept but it's it's the rule of this game here and it's easier to change it if you embrace it a little bit and not be confused by it or afraid of it or against it or feeling like you can't become an expert at it. You can become an expert at it. You don't have to love it or think it's the greatest thing ever. It's probably better that you don't, but you just, just go with it and play with it and you'll have an easier time. You came here to experience this. It doesn't matter where you're from, but you're here now. So be here now and be excited about all of the things. We gave Karen an exercise, which helped her very much. We, this was years ago, but when she would ride in the train, we would talk to her about the different people around her. And we would say that person that being that you're seeing is in a vehicle in the physical body. And we would say, look how that being has chosen to decorate themselves. 
they have short hair and they have dark skin and they have this color eyes and they have this color clothing and this one doesn't have a leg and, and that one is, you know, a little bit hunched over. And we would explain to her that that was an amazing choice, that this character, that this being has chosen to be, to come into this world. And as she would walk around, she would see all these vehicles, these beings running around very quickly rushing because they were on a train and they were going to, to their work. But everyone was so busy and she would stand still and all this movement was going around her. And she began to really appreciate the choices of each being, whether they knew it or not, it wasn't important, but she knew it. And she could marvel at the choices that were made by these beings. And she would look at a building and she would think, oh, some beings made that building and they left it behind for me so I could experience it. So I could experience part of their world and what they've contributed to this earth. And she walked along the ground and she realized that the road that was paved was paved by other be beings and vehicles. And they had contributed something. And for that, maybe they were given money. So that was the exchange of energy. So realize that whatever you're contributing and you're getting money for it, that is the way that you're being acknowledged by what you're contributing. Or if you find it or if you lose it, if you find a hard time getting money, maybe you, you know, that's something that you also need to come to grips with. But she could play with it very much. And she wasn't disturbed by so many things because she appreciated them. She appreciated the inventiveness of all of it and how much it had been thought out and thoroughly put into place by other beings. And so she could play with it and experience it and thrill with every little thing that she got to interact with. We would challenge you to do the same thing with anything you don't understand. Play with it, see what it is. You can choose to not participate if it's something that is disruptive for you, but then ask yourself, why is it really disruptive? And what are your ideas about it? As opposed to just appreciating it and letting it be what it is. And if you really feel motivated, then take steps to change it in a positive way or create something different because that can be your contribution as the vehicle walking this planet. But the two things are that you are here. You chose to be here. There's no doubt about it or else you wouldn't be here. And if the fact that you're still here means you have something to do or else you wouldn't be here. Be here, feet on the ground. You miss your life when you feel that you don't belong here. You belong here. Find people who support you belonging here. Find other beings that support you. But live here, live in this world and not everywhere else because you're missing life. Don't miss it. You chose to be here, experience it. So that's what we would say to you. We say that to you with love. Be here. Read the book, Be Here Now. It's a great book. You'll like it. Okay. Thank book. you so much. You're welcome. Angie? Uh, yeah. Hello. 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 Hello, Theos. Um, this is an unusual question. I don't know if you could answer it, but this is an experience. Okay. Give it a try. Um, my practice of just keeping my chakras clean and open every day, I've discovered that I seem to have an extra heart which is something that I call a third heart. But see anybody else with this, uh, or, or nobody else ends it if I explain it to them. And it seems to be something like a decoder of energy because I'm channeling from the space. It gets larger and larger when I channel from there. And it is green, 
it pulses my my heart chakra. My heart chakra is in one place. This heart expands in a way it is um, um, it's like an extension of myself inside a heart you know but it's green um um did you make any sense of that <laughs> we would just say that it's coming from a larger part of you a larger being that is you so okay. as you're channeling what's happening is the larger part of you is in essence stepping forward because you, the larger part of you is also has a body and is coming mm -hmm. through and you're picking up the chakra of that part of you everything is part of you but do you do you understand yes. what we see is a yes. we see a and and sort of we would say alternate soul right so the, alternate dimensional soul but a larger part of you if you see the way our hands are this would be you and this would be that soul coming forward mm -hmm. and what you're actually picking up is the heart within the chakras of this soul i see so yeah that, as that you makes are sense. as you are channeling you you draw this energy higher to you we would say that would be much like we are okay for, for karen because you have aspects of your soul it's one soul mm -hmm. but you have aspects of your soul and those aspects have their own energy their own lives their own incarnations sometimes and mm -hmm. but you are one soul and so there are different moments where you draw to you those aspects mm -hmm. we came to teach karen because we identified with her soul mm -hmm. she was very much like we were in our younger incarnations. So because of her asking, we came to teach her and to prop her up and to bring her her knowledge, but it's from her asking. And, and we would say to you, it's very much the same. So we would say to you, ask who it is. And okay. give it a name. I'm asking. Can we, <laughs> well, keep asking. Okay, I will. I very much believe it's not for us to tell you who you are. Uh, yes. Yeah. And, and, and the name doesn't necessarily always matter. The name sometimes comes very much after. The word Theos is not our name. It's mm -hmm. what we are. And mm -hmm. it represents something to her. And that's the name that came through. But that was a chosen name. So maybe at this moment, the name is not so important. The relationship's important. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it's coming from a beautiful place. It's love energy. So never doubt that ever. When it's love, it's love. And you are love. So it can only be you. Yes. Loving you and being there for you. Yes. So that's lovely. I, re I recently had an experience where I went within and lost my identity, my mind, and found source within me, and I became source energy totally. It consumed me. It scared me. <laughs> it was scary <laughs> because I really did lose my mind. <laughs> Well, beyond us, beyond our ego selves, beyond our right. identified selves, there is nothing, but that nothing is yeah. everything. So at one moment, we will return to that. We will return right. to nothingness. That is the all creative force is there. All potential is there mm -hmm. and that nothingness, but that nothingness has no identity it has no name it has no anything but it's total bliss it's, it is it so is it's not to be feared you're not ready to go there but when you are and able, there. I'll you stay experienced there. it you have no, no identity you, now it, it doesn't go away no it's it not something that you move out of it's it's something you wake up to 
and you exist there and then your emotions seem really balanced you know you're not so wishy-washy completely confident in in yourself because you're aware you're aware of who you are now you know wow. it's a beautiful awakening for entire humanity to have to experience you know I've experienced different layers of awakening but this one blew my mind uh, right out of my mind <laughs> which was a good thing it's the purest form of who you are and one step uh, beyond that is nothing okay <laughs> so, so that's the next step that's the next step. That's a step that you won't be able to take in this life. You might experience a okay. moment, but you won't stay wow. there because if you stay there, you will you will cease to be. But that's okay. where we all go. That's where we all come from. Mm -hmm. That nothingness. People are afraid when they die that they will become nothing. That there's nothing, and in fact, there is nothing. But it's a different nothing than they think. Nothing is, in fact, everything. Yes. Yes. That's the reason we exist is that the creator wants to experience itself. Exactly. And the only way to do that is to reflect. We are all reflections of the divine. Everything is a reflection. And the only way to see itself is to reflect itself. And then those selves reflect themselves and they come down until they become us. But mm -hmm. eventually we will go back to that nothing but i don't think it'll be tomorrow or maybe it will be there's no time but it's well, good that you can experience it but don't be afraid of it know that that's the way things are yeah. it's yeah. a gift to be given the ability to see yes. so be, be pleased, when i be thankful when i close my eyes mm. and i go into that back at my body I can see that I am. I have this light body. I can see my chakras. I can see that third heart, and I got this huge, big flower on my head. Looks bizarre. Looks so weird because I'm used to seeing the body, where now I'm seeing something else, which you is probably the energy within the body. Exactly. The yes. It's really pretty and beautiful which is something i'm not really familiar with in this lifetime or in this now when you're in the spirit and you tend to disconnect from reality in a way but i need to kind of merge them both back in i can feel that i'm imbalanced in that way maybe i'm too i spend too much time with my spirit I don't know, it doesn't matter though, you know, Just where I am is so perfect. Spirit is not separate from you, it's you. Exactly, so right. Maybe the mental jump you need to make is to realize that it's not you're with your spirit, but the spirit is you. So start right. to open your eyes a little more and don't only okay. sit around with your eyes closed. Internal is part of it, of course. <laughs> okay. We are here to be here. We're here to to experience this world. We're, we are also to know that the other world is there, that that is also as we, well, it's more real than this world, but experience this one and bring your knowing with you. Bring your knowing with you. So you can, of course, help other people. And also try to see those beautiful chakras and flowers on other people so that you can appreciate them as well because they are also you so see all your different incarnations see the extension of yourself and then truly fall in love with everyone and everything mm -hmm. see it in animals see it in trees and flowers and birds and in inanimate objects as well see them as part of it when you start to really understand that everything is connected you will see the connections and then it's a different world that you're experiencing Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Mm -hmm.
We're done. Mm -hmm. Are we done? Yes, I do have a question. Okay, who is that? You might not remember me, but I am actually my father's little daughter. <laughs> I am Jillian. Hello, Jillian. <laughs> I wanted to know who are you? I, I heard about you from my father. We are aspects of Karen's oversoul. We are, in fact, part of her soul family. We are, we are, that's how we would say it. We are not personalities so much as we are beings that experience and we prop up the vibration of Karen in order to teach her so that she can have a broader perspective. Hmm. I don't seem to recall that. Is this uh, more like, um, is it more like you know, what I am appearing right now? Like, yes, you you know, as I can have a, a totally different appearance from what I see, uh, or people see from uh, my body right now, because that's my daddy's body. We are not incarnated beings, and we're not hybrid children. Hmm. We are, if you picture a diamond, and the diamond has facets, we are a facet of that same diamond. Hmm. That's we are but it's all one diamond it's one soul that's how a soul is but it has different aspects and we are an aspect of that so um, okay i just hope you actually know who i am because i know that you, you never many of people don't know who i am um my daddy is actually a dragon and i am his daughter it's nice to meet this you is his physical so what have you come to say today then i i just uh, i want to know like who you are and what you want to talk to me about having an earth identity i'm very curious because i've never been down there only my mom and dad is there so what is your question i you want to understand know about what does it look like to have an earth identity we think you should talk to your father about that because that's not a question. We don't have an earth identity either. So we are not the ones to answer your question. But your father who is on earth can answer that question. Okay. Is there any other questions? When the channeler talks to the channel. I have a question. Hmm. Hello. Um, my Hello. question, my question is, is that how can I pay more, be more attention, have more attention or pay more attention to my higher aspects of my oversoul of what it says, what it says to me? Through meditation is the best way to start communication if you don't have it already. That's the best way. Do you do meditation? Do you meditate? I do, yes, every day. And when you meditate, do you, do you get information or do you hear any kind of still small voice talking to you, giving you answers? On certain occasions. Well, sometimes it starts slowly. But what specifically is your question? Because that is truly your intuition that is coming through. That is the aspect of your higher self. But you should ask for that communication if you want it. I've been asking because it has, like, as you mentioned, that there's, um, like, just like how a diamond shape, that there's many aspects. Yes. My not interest... all aspects will be Not all aspects will be able to communicate with you because... You are also dealing with many multi, you're a multi-dimensional being and many of your aspects may or may not be able to have the awareness of you. So, because they are in their own experience and maybe they are not able to, uh, they don't have the awareness. That's the best way to say it. 
So for, for instance, for Karen, Theos was aware of her. They became aware of her. They were aware of each other and they have their collective, their collective mind, their group mind that they work within and they became aware of her. So in that way, they were able to reach out to her. We have a cat about to crawl upon us. The animals really like our energy, so they always come around while we are here. But we would say to you, in your meditation, begin to ask and start to really listen. Just listen. And we would also suggest to you to do some automatic writing, if you have that ability, to just put a pen in your hand and go into meditation and start to write. And ask the question, who are you? And, and, and just let the information come. But the best and the only way really to do it is in meditation and also in your dream time to open up that communication. So we hope that answers your question. It, it will require some effort on your part. And mostly it's listening, listening. And then when you hear something, don't doubt it so much. Don't say, oh, is that it, was that? But, but start to have the communication. What is it specifically you want to know from your higher self? On my own attention, I would say, um, not uh, not in the sense to be more receptive to my higher self, so that I may not repeat myself every single time, so to speak. Well, we would say to you, let go of the judgment of yourself first. Be kind to yourself, love yourself, and doesn't matter if you repeat yourself a million times but we would also just say to you in your meditation begin to have a conversation and and address your higher self and but but no but at the same time know that it's not separate from you it is you it's ultimately you so you're really speaking to yourself but in your meditation start to focus on an object within your mind, see it as a bright golden light, maybe somewhere here in your third eye or even a little higher and start to just acknowledge it. Say, I, I know that my higher self is part of me. I know that I have the ability to communicate with my higher self and I just wanna welcome you and thank you for the knowledge that you bring. And then listen, listen for the answer. And once you start to, it's, it's, it's like being at a party and being a little bit intimidated to talk to the person next to you. And sometimes the conversation will start off very, very slowly. But once you really get into the conversation, it will start to happen. And then invite them to talk to you. Invite them to, to give you, you know, feelings and sensations and start to when you get those feelings and sensations, acknowledge them. And then you will free up that line of communication. We would say to you that there's probably a lot of communication going on now that you don't really attribute to your higher self, but maybe it's your gut feeling or your, or your just you know, instant knowing, but that's really your higher self talking to you. You may or may not have a personality that you would identify with. Is that clear for you or no? It's very clear. Um, I've been, I have been on, I've been on uh, certain situations, um, th I, things or um, certain intimidations from others. And sometimes I feel that I, in a sense, like listen to myself first before I actually, um, um, act, so to speak. We could also say to you, you might want to identify your higher self as a guide. You might want that to be, because that again, is going to be part of your higher self. Your guides are, are really you coming to you. So you may say you might have a guide personified as a being, as an Indian or a, some sort of 
person that 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 identifies itself but that is really truly you and that's that's what we would like to communicate so you can also ask for your guides to step forward and to come to you and to identify but if you if you say to yourself i have a guide who are you what comes into your mind's eye does it come in as a being does it come in as a angel does it come in as as a we don't know but something like that that is really you and you can say your higher self or you can say guides you can call down to angels and ask them to to help you to understand do you work with angels because we sense angels yes um, i do i do work with angels um so we would, ask, I, we would say to you to to ask your angels to to bring your guides forward to you and to help you identify them but know that those are part of your higher self okay um thank you so much and i was gonna ask a second question sure um my second question is is that based on my um how you would say um, my past experiences with my energies so to speak um I've been having some of these uh, nervous tendencies within myself to how and to the point that it actually affects me emotionally and even through my channeling, so to speak. Um, I was wondering if there's any other way, is there a way to, or a, a solution or in a sense uh, to, help me to cope and move forward and move past it. And how is this nervousness manifesting? In what way? It's through, it's through people, it's through certain situations. It could, it's also, it could be some drama, it could be some, um, uh, circumstances, things like that, in that sense, and some angers from, that emanate from, rise up from others. From others, the anger rises up. Yes, and I perceive, I empathically feel that, and sometimes my ego, in a sense, feels that as well, and it how it gets to the point that it vibrates to a certain degree that it rallies up my ego in a sense that it conflicts with my abilities, so to speak. Well, we will say to you, in every situation, you choose your reaction, whether it seems like it's being imposed upon you or coming from somewhere else. But there is the lesson that we all have about facing our demons, whether they're demons or our demons, or they're actually our internal demons. They're, it's just the same. So the integration of that is really what you're after. The handling of that emotion is what you're after. And that is coming back to what we said before of really knowing who you are and not being so attached to outcome or so attached to sensation and really seeing it from a standpoint of, of the observer and really realizing how, how things do impact you and why, why, why do you, why do you have a fear around a certain thing? What is your expectation that is attached to that? We sense for you, it's, it's a, drive for perfection that may or may not be necessary. You don't have to have everything a certain way in order for things to function the way that, that you want them to. Sometimes things won't function the way you want them to, but there's a lesson in that as well. So we would say to you, don't be so hard on yourself and therefore don't be so hard on others. Don't need everything to be a certain way. Do you understand what we mean? Yes. And 
So that's your lesson in this incarnation. So when it starts to trigger for you, we need you to set up some sort of mental click where you see it happening and you can step outside of it as opposed to having it happen and then you think afterwards, what's happened? Why did I lose control in that moment? As soon as you need to put maybe a rubber band on your wrist and when something starts to trigger you, make the mental idea to flick the rubber band so that it knocks you out of that thought pattern. And then you can step outside of it and really start to see it. What we see is you get in it, things progress, and then afterward you're left sort of like you've been run over by a car and you think, what's happened now? Why am I in this situation again? What's happening is you're not in front of it. You're not observing it. You're experiencing it in an uncontrolled way. And the control has to be taken by you. But that's a decision. That's a mental decision and you have to practice it. You have to practice it. So we would say, put a rubber band around your wrist. And when you start to feel things go crazy, say to yourself, I'm gonna look at my wrist and I'm gonna snap it. And that, that hitting of that rubber against your wrist will change your awareness. It will shift you and give you the chance in that moment to decide, are you gonna stay in this and argue and fight and get disconnected? And we say disconnected because you have stepped away from your true self and you, and you sort of jump into the abyss and you're flailing. But in that moment, you can choose, and everyone can do that. Choose, I'm going to look at this from a different perspective. And, and start that discipline for yourself. Because your task in this life is to learn to control that, to, to manage the, it's like being on a boat and, and starting to lose control and the boat's gonna topple over. And the last thing you wanna do is stand up in the boat knock it over but you got to learn to control it you got to learn to work with it when the wind is going crazy or the waves are going crazy you need to learn how to not rock the boat that's the boat being yourself but to keep it steady in in, in tumultuous waters because so much of the tumultuous tumultuous that's a very difficult word for us tumultuousness is within you and not really outside of you it's you controlling you and your reaction and choosing it. And part of having the better reaction, the one that will keep you connected to yourself, is by acknowledging that that other being is you, bringing you that opportunity to choose something different. It will change your perspective a little bit. Also knowing when to step away from something as opposed to trying to make it be a certain thing or letting go of the out outcome. So put a rubber band on your wrist and snap it. And you start to feel yourself. Do you have a feeling of losing control? Is that what happens? Do you get a little yeah. floaty? And yeah, I do. And sometimes yeah. I get- We feel that. so. We feel you getting, that's what's happened is you've already, the boat's already turned over and you're already being taken away by the waves. Before that starts to happen and right on the precipice of that, snap that rubber band. It's a little bit behavior therapy. We're not an expert in that. But <laughs> we will tell you, you need something to bring you back into yourself quickly. And that will do it. And sometimes it gets a little scary. So snap it. The only fear is the out of control fear. And what's happened is you've forgotten in that moment that you have control. You think life is happening to you. And in that moment, it's happening to you because you're not in control of it. So get in control of it and take a step back. In your mind, step backwards or physically step backwards. And, and the first thing we want you to do is observe the situation from a detached place. And we want your reaction, your first reaction to be, huh, this is what is happening. 
That has to be your reaction. You have to take it in and see it as what it is. Just take this. You might physically want to do it just symbolically so that it happens mentally, but take a physical step back and go, huh, this is the situation. And then say the situation to yourself. I am talking to this person. We are not agreeing. What is my real goal here? Don't worry about what their goal is, but wonder what your goal is. It doesn't matter so much what the other person is doing. What happens is what you're reacting to. What is it I'm really trying to control? What is it I really want in this situation? You'll have a lot better perspective. And if you start to be afraid, you snap your wrist and you'll say, am I really in danger? What is really in danger? Nothing. I'm an eternal soul. I will always exist. Nothing truly bad can happen to me because I am eternal. Everything else is not real. Take that step back. But snap yourself back in. And that's for everyone. Snap yourself back into reality, the reality of what's real. The reality is that you are an eternal soul, that you are always and everything else is not real. So the, the monster can only jump off the screen if you let it in your mind. Yes, you can be physically hurt in this life. That is true. But the fear about it is, is what we would like you to be able to let go of. Sometimes you are hurt and sometimes you physically are in pain. But there's nothing wrong with that. We hope we answered your question. It's a big question you're asking. Eh? It I is. I want you to take little steps, little steps to give you the perspective because it's all about your perspective. It's all about your perspective to anything. It's the same thing as when you walk down the street and it starts to rain and you want to dance in the rain. And it's another thing when you walk down the street and it rains and you are irritated that the rain is getting you wet. Two people having the same experience of the rain and two totally different reactions. We want you to always be able to choose your reaction in every situation. So snap yourself back into reality because we think that's important for you to give yourself that little moment where you can see it outside of being in it. There's a, the phrase of you don't see the forest for the trees is very true for a lot of people, and especially for you if it's causing you anxiety or distress. So snap yourself back in. Or snap your finger, that might work. Just snap your finger, give yourself that shift. That's all we have to say about that, unless you have something else. That's it, but thank you so much for assisting me with the, with what I'm experiencing. We love you and we think that you, this is your, this is your lesson that you came to learn. Thank you. Don? I've unmuted. Hello. Here you unmuted. Okay, thank you. Greetings, Theos. This is Dawn. I just want to uh, know if there's uh, any direction that I could direct my th intentions for this planet at this time. Thank you. What problem would you wish to solve? We well, want to answer your own question. Anything within, uh, I, don't, I guess, the uh, tectonic plates or if there's still an issue? What do you feel? Is that your intuition that they are still an issue? Not so much, no. It's just. Um, and don't waste your time. It's been an issue in the past. Yes. Well, there's always something to do. But we would like you to start to follow your own intuition a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we also agree with you that they're not so much an issue now. So what comes to mind for you? 
I don't really have anything right now. Um, the issue down, down, the issue in Antarctica is pretty much resolved, <clears throat> which I'm very thankful for. Well, um, we will say to you that if you don't feel anything at the moment, we don't want to identify a problem that mm -hmm. isn't there. And you know where Correct. attention goes, energy flows. So yes. if you're not feeling the, we, we appreciated the last time we spoke to you, your uh, resolve to be part of a solution and to take action and to do that very successfully. We also say to you, trust the, the, uh, the allowance of downtime. And in that time, fill yourself up. Take care for yourself. Focus on your own energy and filling your own energy. And don't only look for problems, but see this moment of quietness because there will always be something else eventually. We don't want to jinx it, but we'll just say that in the moments where you don't feel inspired to do something, then choose to do something because you want to do it. And at the same time, remember to take care for yourself, edify yourself, send energy to yourself, surround yourself with your metrotonic, we cannot say the word, cubes, mm -hmm. and send that energy to you to expand your own awareness so that your reach in searching for something to do will also be expanded and grown. So that's what we would tell you to do, even though we don't want to tell you to do anything. Understood. Thank you very much, Leos. You're welcome. Have a lovely day. Thank you. We, we, were, have, we were having a lovely time. Always. Blessings. Blessings to you. We like Dawn. We like you all, but we like Dawn. Unless anyone else has uh, another question, I think uh, we are done for today. Good. Okay, I believe that was it. Um, do you, do you want to say anything before you leave? Yes. We would like to say that within every webinar, you'll find always that there is a theme. Within any talk, there's always a theme. And it started with knowing yourself, balancing your chakras, and being in control of yourself. And all of those things work hand in hand. So in order to know yourself, you have to accept yourself for who you are right now, knowing that you are exactly in the right place at the right time. You can't be anywhere but where you are, and you are supposed to be there. You can take direction to change whatever you want, but that is your choice to do it. And don't sort of wait for something else or someone else to tell you what you should be or what you should do, because it's really up to you. It's really your choice. We would like you to be more aware of your ability to make those choices and the necessity that you do it, because then you will know that you are taking action and being on your right path. And you will really be your true self then. Don't look for yourself outside of yourself. Look for yourself within you. Look at who you are. Realize that you chose this. And you didn't choose incorrectly. You didn't make any mistakes. Embrace who you are and how you are. Because you chose it for a reason. And the reason is to have the experience of you. It sounds like we're talking in a circle, but we're really not. So we want you to be empowered. You are unique and you are necessary, each one of you. And there's nothing that someone else can do that you need to do. And there's nothing that that other person needs to be you. No one can do what you do better than you is what we're trying to say. And just be happy to be you. You're all unique and there's a reason. It's because what you bring to the world is exactly what you should be bringing. 
and no one can do it better than you. So we love you and we hope that we answered your questions. So namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. We shall see you soon. <laughs> Welcome back, Karen. Thank you. That was good. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Yes, I think everyone got their questions answered, so. It was intimate. It was more intimate. I think it's nice um, to have an intimate uh, discussion. Felt like really real questions and really real necessary kind of exchange yeah exchange yeah felt yeah. real you know very real very grounded very real i i had the sensation of animals crawling on me the whole time <laughs> they passed by a few times i've got a cat right here you can't see but he's right here and he's <laughs> in between the microphone and the keyboard some miraculous kind of feat of engineering that only a cat can do yeah <laughs> yeah, I've seen them before. So, um, I don't know. If the, do, do you want to? Do you have anything else to say? I mean, I could do a blessing. You could do a blessing. Anybody else? Sure. Could Monkey's blessing? gonna do the blessing. My cat. Monkey's gonna. <laughs> he just gave me five. Did you see? Yeah. Um, no, I, I'm. I'm trying to. I'm. I'm hearing. I was hearing most everything. Um, yeah, the, the message is really just being who you are and, and really accepting yourself and being excited about who you are, I think, and, and, and being excited like and appreciative of you, you know? We always talk about being appreciative of everything and being so happy that we're in the world, but we have to start appreciating ourselves a little bit and being excited about who we are and excited about uh, yeah, us, us as people, us ourselves. Us as human. Yeah, us as human, but yeah, because we are human right now. And so just go with it. <laughs> just like, okay, I'm going yeah. to go with it. Yeah. I mean, if you really want to be, you know, another person, then become an actor and you can be all kinds of other people. But yes, I think <laughs> that's, that's the thing, the or, or, or avoiding uh, certain emotions, or certain parts of yourself. Or... For whatever reason, I think we, we distrust everything about ourselves. Every impulse, we think, oh, is that right? Or is that right? And there's so much judgment about it. But there, there's got to be a way to, to really let that go. And it's the, it's the celebration of, of us being us. Everything isn't always going to go right in life. I pretty much a evidence of that. I mean, I, my, <laughs> you know, <laughs> life doesn't always go the way you think, but maybe you shouldn't think about it so much and just go with it a little bit. That's the go with the flow, I guess. But taking decisions for yourself is, is really important and, and deciding what you want and, and going in that way is, I think, really the key. Yeah, I think part of it is when when things don't go the way you expected to, them to or the way you wanted them to, um, you, doubt, you start to doubt yourself. Yeah. As opposed to saying, I did the best I could do. Yeah. And now I just have to move forward um, and accept that that's how things are right now. Well, I think that accepting the way things are, I agree with you, accepting the way things are doesn't mean that you just give up or, or think, okay, I'm done. No, that's yeah. why I said move forward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, 
Yeah, it doesn't mean that you just like bathe in it. <laughs> well, or or you can, you know, I think the best thing is what they were saying is become the observer of it and not be too affected by it. And just yeah. see it for what it is. It's just, you know, it's just a moment in time. It's just a moment. And and, and it's gonna life be, changing, uh, you know? Yeah, it sometimes it's hard and, and there's gonna but be it, times it, that you're gonna be uncomfortable. But the hardness is the lesson. The, the difficulty and the less, if, if you got it, you know, there's so much of stuff that you do well that you don't realize that that also and is a choice of where the, That's where the issue is. We, we only see when we, we tend to see when we fail, not, not the things that we actually did well, right. even within the failure. That's right. So, so um, the, the observation should come on all aspects of, it's not just, you know, we're all like, I, I, I say is we're always really willing to take responsibility for the things that go well for us, but when it goes wrong for us, we're not so willing to take the responsibility or to, to become the observer of it. You know, you, whether things are going badly or going terribly, if you're observing them, you're not having the reaction to them. You're just more of acknowledgement of them. So and then you can choose what you want to do in the moment, you know. So, but that's that's the lesson. I mean, that's the whole that's the whole lesson. So, if you don't if you don't have it down, well, yeah, join the club. But we're all here to do that, and every moment we have that choice. So, right. Yeah. All right. Yes. Please give a blessing. I think that's a good idea. Okay. So, um. This is more, and it actually relates to something I had written, but it's funny, it relates to our entire. That's because um, every webinar. webinar has its theme and everything that happens is in that theme. That's just the way it goes. Yes. <laughs> so this is, um, today I will walk with the intention of power within my soul and within my heart. I will honor myself and respect myself. Today, I will only contemplate words of love and wisdom. Today, I shall see myself as one created with purpose, love, and understanding. Today, I will open new doors within me, doors of wonder, of awe, doors of kindness and acceptance of who I am and what I have been for therein lies my power, my self-love, and my love of God. There's a beautiful quote about from um, Lon Mylou Duquette, and he says that, uh, that God and I will reach, the Supreme Being and I will reach enlightenment at exactly the same moment. And you're experiencing, because that's what the divine intelligence wants, that's what the divine wants is to experience, and you're going to keep experiencing, and the moment you reach enlightenment is when Supreme Being will reach enlightenment, and then you'll be done, and you'll go to the nothingness, and that's, that's what we're really here for, so embrace it all. Even the yunky stuff. Embrace it all. But love yourself through it. Yeah. And to be gentle on yourself. And be gentle on yourself. And other people. Other people yeah. as well. You, you know. Give everybody yes. a pass. Yeah. yeah. That is true. Yeah. And And... And, um, and sometimes I think when we come, when we have become very self-involved, um, we tend not to be very kind to others. Yeah. Um, because we lose, we start to lose perspective. It's all, but it's always perspective. It's always perspective. So. Yes. Love is so the highest perspective. Remember. So try to get into that love spot and then see yeah. the world through those eyes. 
Many shades of gray. <laughs> so on that note, I want to thank everyone that was here that participated today. Um, I think we all learned a lot. And we all got a lot from it. And, um, and thank you to Karen. And um, if any of you would like to book a session with her, um, please feel free to go to ecoin.org. And right there, we'll direct you. That's right. Um, the button that Sabrina never pushes. Um, <laughs> 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 Yeah, <laughs> um, it will it will let you know, or um, you know you can text me and I can let you know how to contact Karen, <laughs> um, and and set up a session with her if you have any further questions or more personal questions that you would like to answer one on one. Um, it would certainly benefit you. Um, to do that. So on that note, thank you everyone who participated today. And thank you, Karen, for doing this for us. Thank you and namaste and blessings to everyone. It was always lovely to be with you. So. Namaste to everyone. Thank you.